I mean, are we live? Good morning, Kahal Kadosh. Shavua Tov and Chodesh Tov Besiman Tov. Today is Sunday. Rosh Chodesh Sivan Ava Aleinu Letova. 45th day of the Omer, 21st day of May 2023. Today's class, graciously sponsored by Yaakov Kobi Coven for the Refua Shelema of Michel Ben Zahara and by David Zohar, Le'ilu Nishmat, his beloved father, Reuben Nasir Ben Monir, may his neshama have an aliyah in Gan Eden. Amen. I'd like to divide today's class in two different portions. Number one, to speak about this final week of Sefirat Omer and discuss also Rosh Chodesh Sivan, which is a historical date in the Jewish calendar. Let's start with the Omer, and then Be'ezat Hashem will speak in a few minutes about the uh, Rosh Chodesh Sivan. Now, the 45th day of the Omer enters into the final week of the Omer. The final week of the Omer belongs to David HaMelech Alev Shalom, and being today the 45th day, Yaakov and David meet in this particular day. Yaakov Abino representing the topic of Tif Eret, the concept of truth, honesty, beauty, and David Amelech representing the aspect of kingdom, the aspect of kinship that we'll discuss now in this particular uh, concept. So if we remember the life of David Amelech Alev Shalom, which is directly connected to the celebration of Shavuot, we know that David Amelech lived a very a limited life. Exactly 70 years being born in Shavuot, passing away in Shavuot, based on the master plan, David Amelech should have born and lived the world the very same day that he was born, because his tikkun was just to be born and live that very same day. But we all know well that Adam Arishon gifted from the life of his life 70 years to be make up the life of David Amelech. That's why if you look in the Torah, in Sefer Bereshit, the Torah tells us how many years did Adam Arishon lived? 930. What happened to the thousand? Short answer, he gave them two. David Amelech, Allah wa Shalom. Now, the, the Zohar explains that in this aspect of David receiving life from Adam, it's not only that Adam Arishon needed a tikkun, needed a spiritual remedy for the sin of dawn in the beginning of the creation, but the Zohar Kadosh explains that when a person becomes a king of Israel, you are human, obviously, because you're not an angel, you are human, but you need to understand what's the mission of the king. What's the purpose of a Jewish king? The king, says the Zohar Kadosh, it's a bridge that connects the person, meaning to say the Jewish people, with a Kadosh Baruch Hu. And that's why so much emphasis is made in the book of the Nevi'im, in the book of the Ketubim, about the history of the kings. Some kings were great, but some kings were a disaster. Without going into names, there is no need to do that. But we know that we are great kings in Israel, like Shaul, David, Shelomo, eh, Asa, Hezkiyahu, all these were great holy kings from Israel. But on the other side of the street, we have disasters of the king. Goes further, the Zohar Kadosh, and it says that the same way that we learn in the early days of the Omer, how every week of the Omer and every Sadiq connected to the Omer, Abraham, Isaac, Yaakov, Moshe, Aaron, Yosef, and David, each one of them connects to a different part of the human body. And we discuss this maybe in the first two weeks of the Omer, when we come across the Sefirah Kol Malchut, and the Zohar Kadosh explains in the Tikkunim of the Zohar that the Malchut, the essence of kingdom, is represented by the mouth of the person. 
And this is not a new topic. This is a topic that we discuss this several times throughout the years because every year we learn about the Sefirata Omer and throughout the year we learn about Shemirat Lashon, etc. But the Zohar Kadosh writes and it says that why the mouth is connected to this ultimate Sefirah? Why the aspect of kingdom is connected to the mouth? The short answer is that the mouth of the person can become the driver of the life of the person. The better the person speaks, the nicer the person speaks, the more positive the person speaks, the better the life becomes of the person. But if God forbid the person has a set of mouth or a set of lips that knows no boundaries, no filtering, no thinking before speaking, the person speaks because they want to speak, the, the Zohar tells us that that becomes clearly the enemy of the person. And with this, we are able perhaps to understand the Pasuk from Shelomo Melech that says, Mavet Behaim Beyad Halashon, death and life is in the mouth, in the hand of the mouth. Why is in the hand of the mouth? Very simple. You can do everything good. You can pray beautiful, you can give general donation, nice donations, you can dress beautiful, everything is great, but suddenly you open your mouth to talk to another person and suddenly we see a monster. We don't see a nice person. Or the opposite. You can be just one more person, average, but when you open your mouth, you speak properly, clean, respectfully, complimenting instead of complaining, complimenting instead of criticizing, saying positive things. And this is not a Hiddush. We mentioned this in the past uh, when uh, I think uh, the source is found. Sefer Hasidim is a known fact that he says as follows. As long as the words remain inside of my mouth, I am in charge of my life, silence. Once the word comes out of my mouth, I become slave of my words. In other words, you cut, let's say you take care of your wife, you take care of your children, you pay your bills, you help in the kitchen, you do some of the groceries, whatever they ask you, we do. But then suddenly we say something out of line, right? Are you familiar with this? I think we're all in the same boat, right? Okay, beautiful. Okay, anyways, if you are married, you can relate exactly to what I'm saying. So everything good that we may have done, which is beautiful, suddenly gets hindered by why? Because I said something out of line. Doesn't matter all the good that you did. Because those are actions. So that's what the Sefirah of today says. The person goal, says the Zora Kadosh, is to be in charge of the speech, of their own speech. I can't control the way you speak. I can only tell you to do it properly, to do it respectfully, and to do in a nice way. But at least I can start with myself. Goes further with one more concept. When we speak about kingdom, a few weeks ago, we saw how England crowned the new king, correct? Very interesting protocol and procedure. And this is something that we don't really can relate to. First of all, we live in America. It's a whole different mindset. But I can imagine that for the British kingdom, this was something very special. But guess what? This is only a sample of what's going to be when Mashiach comes. Because when Mashiach comes, it's going to be a worldwide coronation. All the nations of the world will participate in accepting Mashiach as the king of the world. Yes. In the beginning, it will not be easy. Not for the Jewish people, not for Mashiach, not for the world. But as the days and weeks and months are going to go by, slowly the world will understand 
that the ultimate benefit for the entire humanity and the entire world is the kingdom of Mashiach, which at the end of the day represents the kingdom of Hashem. That's the ultimate purpose. Now, also, when we speak about the seventh week of the Omer, it also connects to the seventh day of the creation of the world. We say in the Shabbat prayers, based on the Torah, Ki sheshet yamim asa Hashem et ha-shamayim ve-et ha-ares, u-bayom ha-shabi'i Shabbat ba-inafash. Six days of work, seventh day of rest. The day of the Shabbat, says the introduction to the Sefirah of the Omer, represents the essence of Am Israel. It's like many times we ask, is this person Shomer Shabbat? If a person is not Shomer Shabbat, cannot be Hazan. If a person is not Shomer Shabbat, cannot read the Sefer. If the person is not Shomer Shabbat, is not a kosher witness. He may be the nicest person in the world. He's supportive, generous, charitative. He does all the good. But there is one bonding or one connector that is lacking. The connection to a Kadosh Baruch Hu through Shabbat. And that's why so much is written about Shemirat Shabbat. Because Shabbat is what reinforces, says the, the introduction to the Sefirah of today, is this week, the, the umbilical cord between a Kadosh Baruch Hu and the Jewish people. That's the reason it's a Pasuk in the Torah. Beni uben bene Israel ot hi le'olam. The covenant. There are certain misvot in the Torah which are called covenant. One of them is the Berit Mila. One of them is the Tefillin. And the other one is Shabbat and Yom Tov. So when we have this connection with the Kadosh Baruch Hu, we're reinforcing our, uh, how do I say this? Our loyalty, our loyalty towards a Kadosh Baruch Hu, representing a Kadosh Baruch Hu in the world. So let's go very quickly to the messages of uh, today. Now, Tiferet Sheva Malchut. You know what I'm going to say now, because I say it often. The beauty within the kingdom. There are many ways of explaining this, but I'm going to tell you the first one, easy to understand we like it or not are ambassadors of a kadosh baruch Hu in the world now when you are an ambassador you have responsibilities that you must fulfill because you're an ambassador that means that you are representing a certain country how many times you hear in the news the American government or the Israeli government summoned the ambassador of uh, Brazil to meet the, 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 the ambassador of the United States. Usually, you know what that means? Musar. Maybe the ambassador said something inappropriate or maybe the president of the country that that ambassador represents made a derogatory statement against the hosting nation. So the hosting nation calls the ambassador to rebuke him. Sometimes to remove the diplomatic community because how your president had the audacity to speak bad about our country. And this is, by the way, in the world of politics. Obviously, we're not talking about politics here. A Torah class is not a class for politics. Okay? But it says here that if a Yehudi is an ambassador of a Kadosh Baruch Hu, I need to act like an ambassador of a Kadosh Baruch Hu. I need to make sure that I represent Hashem in the world in the proper way. That's why part of our protocol that we have as Yehudim is what? Haim Tovim. Hilul Hashem, Kiddush Hashem. I need to be a walking sanctifier of God's names. 
I cannot walk around not clean, dirty, smelling, talking like a goy, dressing like a goy, haircuts like a goy. I need to show that I'm a true ambassador of God in the world. That's why there is a mitzvah, lota ase from the Torah, which is debatable if it's a mitzvah or is a mandatory requirement to live as a Jew. What is this concept? lo telechu, the prohibition of the Torah of a Yehudi mimicking the ways of the Goim. I'm not telling you now, get rid of your nice shirt and dress black and white. I'm not telling you to do that. I'm not telling you to do that. Relax. You don't have to do that. As long as you're presentable and clean, you are okay. You are okay. But a Yehudi must understand that everything that we do and every action that we take and the way that we act and we interact with people, it gets scrutinized by the world. And that's why whenever a Yehudi does something good, it's beautiful. But whenever a Yehudi does something that is not good, it gets magnified. Why it gets magnified? Because the mind of the Goy cannot understand how could it be you, me, and I, and you are ambassadors of Akadosh Baruch Hu in the world, and how can we act in this way? I understand for a Fahme, for a Goy, and Avi to do a certain thing, but you as a Yehudi, how can you act this way? And that's why Rabbi Akiva comes, and we know the very famous statement of the one and only Rabbi Akiva that so much was said about him throughout his life. Rabbi Akiva had a great teacher. That one of the great teachers of Rabbi Akiva was the one and only Nahum Ish Gamzu. And everybody knows the famous Gemara from Rabbi Akiva that says, Kol avid rahamana letav avid. What does it mean? Rabbi Akiva, Rabbi Akiva says, whatever Akadosh Baruch Hu does is for a good reason. And this is without any doubt one of the fundamental elements of Emuna. That there are things that happen that we don't understand. And as much as we try to understand, we don't understand. So it says here, the one of the messages for today's Sefirah, it says that HaKadosh Baruch Hu is behind everything that happens in our life. I'm sure that we have a lot of questions and we don't understand. But in the past few years, a, a, a song became very popular in the Jewish music scene. This song called Be'afilu Ve'hastara. Have you heard of this song? Be'afilu Ve'hastara Shevetoch Hastara Okay, if you want to know Jewish music, you come talk to me. Okay, don't go to, 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 uh, to Spotify. Come to me and I'll tell you. All right? So what is the meaning of this song? It says, hidden, even in the hidden aspects of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, Vevadai Sham Nimtza Hashem Itbarach. Even when you don't see the essence of Hashem, Hashem is there. Because if Hashem will not be there, it will not happen. It's like this chair. This chair is next to me. Right? Why is this chair next to me? Because this chair has a godly element called domem, the aspect of life of inanimate objects. The moment that this chair breaks and the moment that this chair is no longer useful and you use it to recycle the wood or to make a bonfire, that means that godliness left the chair. That's the lowest level of creation. And the song continues. I can also do concerts. For sure. Don't test me. Don't test me. If you want me to shut the books and sing, I'm ready. 
But I'm not going to do it because I didn't get permission from itorah.com. And I don't think that itorah.com was a platform for me to sing. But if you want behind closed mics to sing, just let me know time and where and I'll be there. You know me long enough, right? Can I sing? Thank you. Anyway, so what's the second part of the song says? Even when rough things come across my life, yet I'm able to survive. How we are able to survive? Because Akadosh Baruch Hu is with us. But Akadosh Baruch Hu is holding our hands. That's message number one. Message number two, tough one. And I'm going to say this for the wonderful husbands and wives in the audience, virtual and physical. So it says, number one, remember always that your wife is what God gave you. What does it mean? God gave you your wife and God did not give you someone else. Whichever God, whichever wife Hashem gave you, that means that this is your neshama. And if you're not married, pray for the right one. Keep praying. Keep praying. That's what it says. So therefore, it says not only that, friends, also friends have an influence on the person. So here it says something very difficult to activate it says accept them for what they are in other words if this is the way your spouse is okay that's the way she is or that's the way he is in the case of a wife listening to the class so what do you do then you stock for life and god forbid i don't think that any husband is stuck for life i don't believe in divorce I mean, I believe that divorce exists. I know that divorce, regretfully, is part of life. But obviously, everybody knows that you need to try your best. You need to try your hardest. Of, obviously, there are situations in life, God forbid, that has shalom, has shalom, is beyond repair, whatever situation it may have been. God forbid these addictions, adultery, all kinds of extreme things. But we're not talking about extremes. We're talking about normal things. So the question is, if let's say you are married, I'm married, and you ask yourself, why can my spouse be like me? Because your wife will never be like you. If you think for a moment that your wife will be like you, you miss school that day. Your wife can be your best ally or your wife can be your biggest headache. So then how do we remedy this concept? I'll give you what's written in the books of Shalom Bayit. That when a man or the wife, again, because we have a mixed audience, male and female, so sometimes I may say male or female, but actually means both sides, that each one, tries to improve or work on themselves and once i work on myself and i understand okay my wife is my wife i am me she is she like the other song says if i be you and you are me and you are we and we are you that's a song from the mendel of kotsk you and i are the same i am you and you are me and you are we and we are you. What does that mean? You know what it means? We all are the same. We are equal. We're not different. Yeah, we are different because we are two separate bodies. But the essence of the Neshamot are all united in one goal. Bringing godliness into the world. One more thing he says. Talks about garments. Garments. The garments that a person was wearing. 
So obviously, it's not referring to everyday garments because different people have different things that they do, different works that they do, different situations, etc. But you know, in English, there is a statement that says, and I'm not sure which one is accurate. Garments makes the person or garments don't make the person. I'm not sure which one is accurate. But one thing it says is as follows. That if a person, one of the things that you are able to see on the person is how they are dressed. Dress. Now, I'm not referring what label shoes you are wearing or what label suit you are wearing. I think that is referring clean and presentable. But it says there is a day in the week that our dress code must be better than usual. And this is the day of Shabbat, the day of Yom Tov, which Baruch Hashem, we see the synagogues, most of the people, when they come to pray, okay, thank you, most of the people, they come to pray, they dress properly. Occasionally, you may see somebody that comes in jeans, that comes with torn jeans. We already discussed that it's not appropriate for a Jew to wear torn jeans. It's not good because, God forbid, tearing garments is only when a person is in Avelut. But on Shabbat, you know, that's what the message of today says. It says, Shabbat, Yom Tov, and even Rosh Chodesh, it says you need to highlight that we are different. And I told you this story in the past, how a while back, a guy stabbed me on the street. Was coming from the home to the synagogue, and I see this fellow every Shabbat, almost weekly. Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. That's usually the length of the conversation. And then he says, can I ask you a question, Rabbi? I said, of course. I'm used to be asked questions. So he says, what's your question? He tells me, I see you every Saturday, he tells me, right? And you walk around with a suit, tie, hat, always elegant. Don't you feel the heat? 90, 100 degrees, don't you feel the heat? Don't you feel the humility? The humidity? I said to him, of course I feel it. So why don't you dress like me then? It's just very simple. I'm going to the synagogue. I'm going to the house of God. I'm going to pray to Hashem. I didn't say Hashem, I said to God. So if I'm going to go to the house of the God, of God, I need to be presentable. I need to be clean. I can't just go with t-shirt and a, and a tap. I need to be properly. Imagine, I ask him, if you're an ambassador or you work in a bank, are you going to go in shorts? No, I'm going to go dressed with a suit and tie. So I'm out going to the house of God. He understood. I kept seeing him, but he never asked me more questions. He understood. And that's one of the messages and it says, always be aware that you are representing the Jewish people in everything that you do. You come into your building, you say hello to the concierge, you say hello to the valet. You know, it's always good. It only brings good to the person. Uh, okay, it's already late, but I'm going to go a few more minutes with your permission. First of all, it's raining. That's good. Number two, number two, we started the class late because of Rosh Chodesh prayers. And number three is Rosh Chodesh Sivan. And speaking about Rosh Chodesh Sivan, tomorrow will be too late. Today was the day that we arrived to Har Sinai. Bayom Azeh Ba'u Midbar Sinai. The Pasuk says, Bahodesh Ashelishi Behad La Hodesh, Bayomaze Bao Midbar Sinai. Over 3,300 years ago, 
the entire Jewish people arrived from Mount Sinai. Remember, we left Egypt when? Pesach. We are the 45th day of the Omer. So on the 45th day of the Omer, we arrived to Mount Sinai. And the Pasuk says, Ba'i Hansham Israel Neged Ahar. The entire Jewish people camped next to the mountain. The Pasuk uses a word that grammatically does not make sense. The Pasuk should have said, Ba'yahanu. Ba'yisu Ba'yahanu. In the Torah, we see it later. Ba'yahanu. Ba'yahanu means they camped. So why the Torah says Ba'ihan singular? Rashi answers, Ke'ishehad belevehad. One person, one soul. The Torah, this pasuk, is a bittersweet pasuk. It's not a happy pasuk. It's happy because we were united. But it's not happy because this was the only time there was unanimous unity among the Jewish people. The rest of our journey, by Yisru, by Yahanu, by Yahanu, by Yisru. It's time to move. Why is time to move? We want to stay. We didn't stay long enough. I want to stay longer. This was always different of opinions. When it came to Har Sinai, all of Am Israel were united to receive the ultimate goal that was the purpose of the creation of the world. Um, Rabbi Haim Palachi writes in Mo'ed Kolhai that this is the month of the Jewish calendar that unity and harmony is part of the menu of the month. Like there was unity and harmony when it came to the giving of the Torah, unity and harmony is relevant for Am Israel's survival. And where do we learn such a thing? So yesterday, during Sa'udah Shelishit, I quoted the Shalah HaKadosh that says as follows. If you look at the Ten Commandments, we see something very fascinating. That the first five commandments are called Benadam Lamakom, my godly relationship. If you have a homage, look at the first five commandments. A lot of words. A lot of words. What to, how to connect with God. Look at the Ten Commandments. The majority of the words are in the first five commandments. The second five commandments are called Ben Adam la Habero. But what the Pasuk says, Lo Tinaf, Lo Tignov, Lo Tirsah, Lo Ta'anevereacha et Shaker, Lo Tahmot Betreecha, Lo Tahmot Eshetreecha, Abdova Hamatosh, Hamadodereecha. If you put next to each other tablet number one, commandments one, two, three, four, five, and tablet number two, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, we see that the majority of the letters of the Ten Commandments are in commandments number one through five. These are called Benadam Lamakom, my godly relationship, with the exception of commandment number five, Kaved etavicha veetimecha. And the reason why the Torah places honoring parents in the Mizvot connected to Akadosh Baruch Hu, like believing in Hashem, not doing Abu Dazara, not honoring God's name in vain, and observing the Shabbat to teach me two halachot. Number one, honoring your parents is honoring Hashem. Not honoring your parents is like you're not honoring Hashem. Because your parents are God-given like your wife. Your parents are your parents because Hashem put them together for you to come into the world. That's the reason why the Lacha writes that you must honor your in-laws. Because without your in-laws, you will not have a wife. And without you having a wife, you, you have no children. Now, that's rule number one. Honoring your parents, you're honoring Hashem. 
You're not honoring your parents. You're not honoring Hashem. That's easy. The next lesson is that honoring my parents has boundaries. Has limitations. What does it mean? If God forbid, it should never happen. But a parent ask a son or a daughter to do something against the Torah, respectfully, you must decline. Obviously, we're not talking about saving people's lives. Once you're talking about saving people's lives, forget about Shabbat, forget about Kippur. But let's say that a parent says to a son or daughter, when you come back from the synagogue, set up the cable TV so I can watch the World Cup final. Or pick up the newspaper from the newsstand. Or go to Publix and buy me a dozen of hot bagels. None of the above is permissible. Why? Because doing that, it's going against Hashem. And that's the reason why elsewhere in the Torah says, Ish imo ve'aviv tira'u be'etcha betotai tishmoru. Ani Hashem. Again, the Torah puts together Shabbat and honoring parents. But the Shalah HaKadosh brings a fascinating Hidush. And it says the following. The Ten Commandments contain, collectively speaking, 620 letters. And there are different opinions. How do you understand this number? But we know well that the number 620 in our Torah is very important. First of all, represents Keter. Keter itenu lecha. Crown in Hebrew equals 620. Same numerical value as Hashem Melech, Hashem Malach, Hashem Imloch, Leolam Va'ed. Add each letter from this sentence, gives you 620. What 620 represents? The answer is easy. 600 misvot of the Torah. And then we have a debate. The seven missing numbers, what they connect to. One opinion says, misvot of hachamim. Rosh Chodesh, Halel, Netilat Yadayim, Eruv, Berachot before eating, Maim Aharonim, Hanukkah, Purim. Seven misvot of hachamim. Other opinion says, Shiva misvot bene Noah. The seven universal laws that every citizen of the world must fulfill. Haim Tovim. I know for a fact that there are Gentiles listening and watching this class. So every citizen of the world has an obligation to fulfill the seven Noahide commandments of the Torah. Believing in God, not doing idolatry, not killing, not stealing, not uh, committing adultery. That includes same gender relationship, which is also a prohibition for Goim. Don't think for a moment that same gender relationship is only a Jewish commandment. It's a universal commandment because the Goim also have the, the obligation of procreation of the world. What else? The establishment of a judicial judicial court system, that's the Dina de Malchuta, government, and Ever Minahai, the prohibition of a Gentile eating a piece of an animal while the animal is alive. That's also a biblical obligation for the Gentiles of the world. So we know that a Gentile who observed throughout their lifetime these seven Noahide commandments they go to Gan Eden they have a special segment in paradise the way we call it Gan Eden Hasideh Umot Ha'olam for the righteous Gentiles of the world that's what the Balatania says quoting the Zohar Kadosh. if a Jew if a Gentile saved a life of a Jew like it happened especially throughout the Holocaust, they also have Gan Eden, Schindler, Alava Shalom, okay, famous one, and many others, and many others, they also have Gan Eden. Comes the Shala in this, and he gives a fascinating Hiddush. 
And it says the following, irrelevant which opinion we follow, if, if it's seven Noahide laws, or if it's the seven rabbinical commandments, but let's see, it says the Shala, what are the final two words of the Ten Commandments? Asher Lereicha. Seven letters. Vechol Asher Lereicha. Asher, three letters. Lereicha, four letters. Comes the Shala and it says, You want to know what is the ultimate goal of the Torah? Ben Adam Lahavero. Asher Lereicha. God says, I'm happy that you have a good relationship with me. But I will be happier if you have a good relationship with your friend. And that's the reason why the five commandments connected to friends are short. Lotik Nov. Don't steal from your friend. Don't kidnap. Don't deceit. Don't desire. Shouldn't you give me halachot? I don't need to give you halachot. If I'm telling you don't steal from your friend, period. You don't have to tell me, don't order God's name in vain. I'm the God who took you out of Egypt. Don't have any other gods in front of me. Observe the Shabbat, work six days, and let your animals and your employees rest. To godliness, there is a whole Megillah. To interpersonal relationship, God says, what don't you understand? Don't steal from your friend. What don't you understand? Don't kidnap your friend. What don't you understand? Don't commit adultery from your friend. You don't need Rashi. And that's why the Shalak Kadosh says, and the Shalak Kadosh says one more thing. And will this will finish. Okay. The Shalak says, and this is brought down by the uh, Benishai and the Hida HaKadosh. And it says, how is it conceivable or even realistically speaking that a person can fulfill all of the commandments of the Torah? If you are a man, you don't fulfill the misvot of the ladies. If you are a lady, you don't fulfill the misvot of the men. If you live outside of Israel, you can live the misvot of Israel. If you don't own a piece of land in Israel, you can fulfill the misvot of Israel. If you are not a Kohen or a Levi, you cannot do their misvot. If you are a Kohen, you cannot do the misvot of the Levi or the Israel. So, is it impossible speaking to do all of the misvot of the Torah? Says the Shala Ben Ishai and Hida that there is a formula that you do all of the misvot of the Torah when you have good relationship with people. Your misvot benefit me. You're a Kohen, your misvot help me. Ah, you're a Kohen, you're not an Israel, my misvot benefits you. Oh, you live in Israel, I live in America, not a problem. Your misvot benefit me. How does that happen? Through ahdut. Through unity. And that's why the final two words of the Ten Commandments, when I need to summarize all the Ten Commandments, in Yiddish they say, Tutmer nishkan toivis. Tutmer nishkan toivis. Beseder. What does it mean, Tutmer nishkan toivis? It means don't do me no favors. You can be holy with God. But if you mistreat people, God despises the person. That's why God says, Don't do me no favors. And that's why, and that's why the final two words of the Ten Commandments is Asher Lereicha. You want to prepare yourself in Shavuot, activate what happened today in the arrival to Mount Sinai. Ba'ihan. Rashi says, Ke'ishehad. One person, one soul. One heart, one neshama. So, Ba'ezat Hashem, 
will take advantage of the next few days coming up that by after Kaddish, that by Ezat Hashem, we'll have a surat tovot, and we'll have the zakhut of receiving the Torah, besimcha, of tov levav, amen. Baruch Adonai le'olam, amen ve'amen. Rabbi Hananiah ben Akashia Omer, Ratzah Kadosh Baruch Hu le